Throughout their development, Final Fantasy games are often in a state of flux. Significant changes can be made at almost any moment, and the vision laid out at the beginning rarely matches the product that's delivered at the end. And this is because plenty of content ends up being cut and new ideas can be incorporated at any moment. But the good thing about the earlier games in the franchise was that due to there being consistent teams working on each numbered instalment, some ideas that were deemed unsuitable for one project would instead be used for something else, and this was the case with Idea Kramer. The brainchild of Tetsuya Nomura, Idea was initially designed for use in Final Fantasy VII, but after the team decided that she wouldn't suit the style of game they were creating, Idea was held back and then repurposed for Final Fantasy VIII. Within this particular setting, the style of Adia's Amano-esque aesthetics was the perfect fit, and within the context of the story, Adia would be given two unique roles that were juxtaposed to each other. In one role, Adia appeared as a maniacal antagonist who, under the possession of Ultima Sia, plagued the land. And in the other, Adia appeared as a soft, caring mother who wanted nothing but the best for her children. This choice played with the emotions of the player, but it was a necessary development, as in addition to ushering in the game's second half with the unveiling of an even greater threat, it also helped to showcase that sorceresses were not inherently evil. And this was a very important detail, as it helped to ground the protagonists as they prepared to take on the greatest challenge in their lives. Now for the context of this video, we will be focusing primarily on the role that Adia played while in full control of her mental faculties, and we're doing that because despite being very much a member of the supporting cast, Adia's role in the events of Final Fantasy VIII are just as integral as any of the main cast. We also want to make sure we do this particular video justice, as it was requested by one of our top tier Patreon supporters, Sam Gabriel. So thanks for the suggestion, Sam. Before we dive in though, just a quick reminder to let us know in the comments who you'd like us to see cover in a future Origins video. Alright, so let's get started with Adia's Origins. It's unknown where Adia was born, who her parents were, or where she grew up. But even though there would have no doubt been much change in the world as it attempted to return to normalcy after the lunar cry, that upheaval would have paled in comparison to the life-changing event that affected Adia when she was just five years old. The term sorceress had been etched in society as something to be feared, and this notion dated back centuries to when the great Hein ruled the world as a god. Tired from fighting monsters, Hein decided to create humans to undertake mundane tasks, but he was shocked to see how quickly their numbers grew after paying little attention to their activities. To try and quell this rapid expansion, Hein eradicated all of the children, but this caused a lot of unrest and the humans rose up against their master. Despite his strength, Hein was overwhelmed by his minions and proposed a compromise. He promised to give them half of his power, separating his body into two, but he tricked the humans, giving them his cast off skin instead. Due to this deception, the humans vowed to hunt Hein down to enact their revenge, but they were never able to find Hein as he had transferred his power inside a woman whose frame possessed enough strength to be able to embody the powers of a god. This woman gained the ability to wield significant magical power, and as a result, she became the first sorceress. Hein's action set in motion a long chain of events that would see his power retained throughout the years, as when the first sorceress was at the end of her life, in order to die in peace, she would need to pass on her powers to another woman who had the capacity to embody the Great Hein. This process became known as embodiment, and it was repeated for centuries upon centuries, but during that time, sorceresses gained an unsavoury reputation. Due to the power they wielded, which manifested in a unique way for each sorceress, many were much stronger than mere mortals. There were a few who used their powers for good, but others chose to use their power to try and dominate those around them. It meant becoming a sorceress was a fate that few women wanted, as they knew they would be targeted and potentially persecuted for something that they didn't even choose. But that was the fate that befell a five-year-old Adia. Receiving such power at a young age must have been overwhelming, 
but instead of relishing the power and letting it consume her, Idea instead tried to remain grounded and shied away from using magic for personal gain. Where possible, this saw Idea attempting to remain in the shadows, doing little to draw attention to herself as she didn't want people to view her in a different light and she certainly did not want to be drawn into political conflicts. But despite not falling into the trap of so many prior sorceresses, Idea also did not shy away from who she was and was forthcoming about her designation as a sorceress when pressed. It meant that when she met a young man named Sid Kramer and connected with him in a meaningful way, Idea did not hide her powers as she wanted to be truthful. Her hope was that Sid would love her for who she was and wouldn't be scared away. And her judgement proved to be correct as Sid embraced the darker side of Idea. As their feelings grew, the pair then cemented their connection through marriage and Sid became her knight, promising to be by her side in order to help her in any way that she required. This helped to give Idea peace of mind, as she now had someone else to share her burden. But it was more than that. Sid also helped to preserve her sense of spirit and support the decision she chose to make, the first of which was to open an orphanage. Around the same time, another sorceress called Adele had used her powers in a destructive manner. It saw her become the ruler of Esther, but having grown unsatisfied, Adele wanted more and attempted to subjugate neighbouring territories. This brought about what became known as the Sorceress War, and it led to a lot of pain and suffering throughout the land. One group in particular who suffered more than most were children. Many lost their parents, either directly or indirectly, and had nowhere to go. So Adia and Sid decided to set up an orphanage in an old Centran ruin so that they could at least attempt to help give some kids a place to call home before hopefully finding them a long-term solution. By the end of the Sorceress War, numerous children had made their way to Adia's orphanage for various reasons. Cypher, Quistis, Squall and Alone were amongst the first to join and Selfie, Irvine and Zell joined not too long after. Each of them had distinct personalities and Adia, who went by the name Matron while at the orphanage, attempted to cater to their individual needs. In the case of Squall, she was mindful of his tendency to isolate, but also his connection with Alone. One day, this led to Adia attempting to search for Squall as he had run off to look for Alone and couldn't be found. But instead of finding a young boy, she instead found a much older figure, Squall from the future. This encounter was quite surprising, but Adia had little time to dwell on what was happening, as at the same time, a sorceress named Ultimacia also appeared before her. Having been defeated in the future, Ultimacia was looking for someone to pass her powers onto, and knowing all too well about the process of embodiment, Adia took decisive action. Her main priority was protecting the children of the orphanage from whatever was transpiring, and so, Idea chose to receive Ultimacia's powers so that Alone, Quistis and Selfie would be spared from the burden of becoming a sorceress. With Ultimacia gone, Idea then requested that the older Squall leave too, as he didn't belong in that timeline. But before he was able to do so, Squall imparted to Idea knowledge of seed and garden, and informed her that, even though she knew nothing about them, both of the concepts were her ideas and that they would be central to them defeating a dangerous sorceress in the future. Following the encounter, Idea was left perplexed. But after much deliberation, she concluded that it would be through her actions that Squall, the young boy who resided within the orphanage, would grow up into an individual that would one day defeat a sorceress who posed a great threat to the world. With this in mind, Idea discussed with Sid how they should go about establishing the concepts Squall had disclosed so that they might be able to prepare the children for that particular future. In doing so, they both realised that it would come at great cost to their own personal situation, as they would need to separate and embark on their own separate quests, but they concluded that they were willing to make that sacrifice for the greater good. During the initial stages of their plan, this would see Sid leave the orphanage as he attempted to establish garden, while Adia would stay behind to look after the children. But once Sid returned, having secured funding, Adia decided not to join him at Garden and instead went into hiding. This was no doubt to continue her own objective of remaining in the shadows, but Adia also had an ulterior motive, for she had learnt that Dr. Odin, a brilliant scientist from Esther, was seeking a loan so that he could study her mysterious powers. It saw Adia establish her own branch of seed called the White Seed. 
Together, they would travel on a vessel so as to protect alone from harm, and Adia would maintain their numbers in a similar manner to Sid's garden, by finding children who had nobody else in the world to care for them, and enlisting them. In the years that passed, Adia continued to evade Esther, and she stayed clear of garden as she knew it would only complicate proceedings. Despite having minimal contact, Sid also feared that one day the seed he was training may be required to square off against his wife, and approximately 12 years after they had embarked on their quests, Sid's worst fears were realised. Ultimacia, still alive within this particular timeline, possessed Adia, drawing to the surface powers that she had suppressed over the years and forcing her to undertake heinous acts against her will. This saw Adia slay Vinza Delling, the then president of Galbadia, claim ownership of the territory and attempt to destroy both Trabia and Balam Garden, the two institutions that she had helped to establish, all so that Seed might be destroyed. Realising what may be coming to pass, Sid was forced to instruct Seed to put an end to Adia, and thanks to their efforts, Adia was indeed stopped, just as had been foretold. But due to the nature of the defeat, instead of having to go through the typical embodiment process that signified the end of a sorceress's life, Adia was able to expel some of her power. This power was then transferred to Renoa, the closest suitable host, and with the power expelled, Ultimacia relinquished her grip, allowing Adia to regain control of her body and mind. To recover, Adia returned to her old orphanage, and it was here that she was reunited with Sid for the first time in over a decade. This meant the world to Adia, and the pair no doubt had much to discuss, but being surrounded by fond memories from the past did not help Adia to forget what had just transpired. And to make matters worse, Adia knew that should Ultima Seer try and possess her once again, she might be powerless to stop her, and many more atrocities may end up being committed by her hands. When the children who had been part of the orphanage then visited, Adia apologised profusely for what she had done, even though she had been powerless to stop it. To try and make amends, Adia resolved to help school as much as she could. This saw her disclose what she knew about Ultima Seer's overarching plan relating to time compression, and she helped them to track down the White Seed ship so that they might be able to find alone and protect her from Ultima Sia. Adia also vowed to remove the threat she herself posed to the world, leaving the orphanage and heading to Esther, where she hoped to meet with Dr. Odin. Due to his specialist knowledge relating to sorcery, Adia believed that Odin would have the knowledge required to nullify her powers, but even though this was confirmed to be true, and Odin stated it would be a simple matter, the situation in Esther escalated in ways that could not have been predicted. With how various pieces were moving, even though there were now much more fruitful options available to Ultima Sia, and Adia realised that she would likely have no more use for her, there was always still a chance. So in an effort to minimise risk, Adia decided it would be best for her to leave Esther and remove herself from the narrative. It saw her retreat back to the orphanage to be with Sid, and from here she was able to provide counsel as she knew that her role was coming to an end in more ways than one. Perhaps the most fulfilling aspect though was that she saw that Squall was now ready to undertake the mission that she knew he had been destined for from a young age. And so, her last action before Squall embarked on said mission was to instill in him the confidence to do what was right, even if it may bring about tragedy for those that he knew. With this knowledge inside, Squall was then able to complete his mission, travelling to the future in order to vanquish Ultima Sia. Following the conclusion of the mission, Adia was able to visit Balam Garden for the first time, to see what Sid had accomplished in her stead. It also allowed her to spend time with her family in a comfortable environment, free to enjoy the time that she had without having to worry about the consequences of her power. And that concludes the story of Adia Kramer, one of the central figures from Final Fantasy VIII. It was mentioned during the introduction, but to me, what makes Adia such an interesting character is those two unique roles she was asked to perform throughout the story. On the one side, we get to see Adia as Matron, a caring individual who wanted nothing more than to help people who were suffering. And on the other side, we get to see Adia as a feared sorceress, a dominating individual consumed by a power who has zero compassion or empathy, choosing to take no prisoners and kill any who stand in her way. These two roles 
are the antithesis of each other, and by presenting Adia in this manner, it ensured there were numerous twists and turns in the story. It also helped to highlight, in extreme fashion, the difficult position many people face in real life when someone they love ends up making choices that change who they are and they end up on opposite sides. Squall and the other students, at least in an initial sense, were protected from these emotions due to their memory loss, but Sid, despite being a self-professed coward, had to be strong as he ordered his soldiers to hunt down and kill his wife due to the actions she was taking. And I feel as though he gained this strength from the idea he knew and loved, as if she was of sound body and mind, she would have taken the same action. It's why, despite not being a main character for large parts of the experience, Idea is still an integral part of Final Fantasy VIII. Through her actions in both roles, we not only got to see different emotions drawn out from the cast of characters, but thanks to her storyline, the game will have also resonated with a portion of the player base in a more unique way. But yeah, with that small analysis out of the way, that marks the end of this Final Fantasy VIII Origins video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, share the video around to all the people you know who love Final Fantasy VIII, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. We put out new videos roughly every Monday, and they're from a variety of games and a variety of topics, so there's always something fun and exciting to learn about. Also, while I have your attention, be sure to let us know what Adia means to you as a character in the comments, but also who you'd like us to see cover next. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. A big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, and of course, a big thanks to all of you for joining me on this deep dive into the lore of Final Fantasy VIII. I hope to see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.